The Taint of Blood My grandmother is no longer with us, but she told me a tale that still gives me goosebumps when I think about it. I'd also add she was a shaman. That day, my siblings and I were playing outside while she and my mom tended to the garden. I don't exactly recall how it happened, but I sustained a cut on my hand and was bleeding profusely. So I wrapped it up in a leaf and rushed over to them, crying. They dropped everything and sprinted over to me. We ran inside to get my wound cleaned up and bandaged. Afterward, Grandma and I had a conversation about what happened. Why did you use a leaf to wrap your cut? she asked. Because I was bleeding, I replied. Don't ever do that again, she said with a serious look. She paused a moment to study my face, then continued, At least use your shirt, but never use plants or anything living. Back then, we didn't dare let a drop of our own blood spill on the grass, even when we cut ourselves tending the fields. She was going to leave it at that until I asked her why, which was when she told me. A long time ago, a father and son went hunting one day. The son got injured in the jungle. He sustained a deep gash on his foot. The father, instead of bandaging the wound right away, decided to put the boy on his back and hurried back to the hut in the fields. While doing so, the boy bled all throughout the forest. It wasn't until they were back at the hut that the father tended to his son's wound. By then it was already getting dark, so the father decided it was best for them to spend the night before returning to the village in the morning. In the middle of the night, the boy awoke to something scraping or clawing against the walls of the hut. He couldn't see in the dark since the fire was practically out. All that was left was a few burning embers. He got increasingly scared as the noise got closer and closer. Terrified, he frantically tried waking his father up. Dad! Dad! Wake up! S -s something is outside! He cried. The scraping was no more than ten feet away when his father finally woke up. What's the matter? His father asked. Th th there's something scratching on the walls, replied the boy. His father sat up and listened for it. Sure enough, his son was right. The noise was even closer now. He moved the boy over to the other side of the hut, then rushed to the fireplace to reignite it. Who are you? Are you human or demon? The man shouted, still trying to get the fire going. No, no, you show. It replied. The man shuddered at the unnatural response, but couldn't make sense of it. The sound made its way toward the boy. The hut became illuminated when the man finally got the fire going. The duo saw several long black and bony fingers with sharp talons protruding from the openings of the walls. They felt around, pushing and tugging at the walls of the hut, retracting into the darkness outside and repeating the process over again, making their way closer to the boy each time they reappeared. The boy cried in horror upon seeing them. His father moved him to the center of the room, away from the walls. Get away! Leave us alone! The man shouted. The thing from outside replied with, it terrorized the couple as it made its way around the hut, scraping, scratching, and tugging at the walls as if looking for a way to get inside. The being got to the door and started prying at it with its large black bony hands and fingers. The man swallowed hard, frozen from fear as he held his still crying child. Quickly scanning the room, the man spotted his rifle propped against the wall next to their makeshift bed. He'd forgotten about it due to fear. The man snatched the rifle, and without properly aiming, he pointed it toward the door and fired. The bullet tore a small chunk off the door, spraying bits of debris into the air. The thing let out a groan and yanked its hand away from the door. There was a momentary silence as both father and son eyed the door intensely. The man almost let out a sigh of relief until the thing spoke again. No blood will show, it will show, cool, it will show, it said, attempting to rip the door off its hinges. Its bright, glowing red eyes glared at the couple hungrily from behind the hole created by the bullet. Dad, what are we going to do? The boy cried. The wood around the door started to buckle, all the while the thing outside continuously chanted the same words over and over. No blood will show, it will show. 
The man thought about it and remembered hearing something about warding off demons and evil spirits by roasting chili peppers when he was a little boy. He didn't know if it would work, but felt there was no other option. They had a whole pouch full of them inside from the harvest. He grabbed a handful of them and threw them on the pan, working it with a spoon, hoping and praying it would work. It didn't take long for the smell to permeate throughout the hut. It was so potent, even the duel started to have coughing fits. The smell was too much for the thing to handle, and it took off running away into the night. Afterward, the man and his son stayed up to keep the fire going, in case it returned. Fortunately for them, it did not. Just to be safe, the duo waited until late morning before making their way safely back home. It was believed what happened that day was the result of human essence tainting another living being, which manifested itself into a demon or evil spirit, Grandmother said. So that night, Grandmother ended up roasting chili peppers atop the stove, filling our whole house with the smell. As terrified as I was after hearing Grandmother's story, nothing ever happened, and for that, I have her to thank.